This is going to be one of the most formulaic sections in Calc 2. This is dealing with powers of sine and cosine. This is one of those things that we're just following rules. That's it. These are the rules. If I have the integral cosine to the j power of x times sine to the k power of x dx, this is what we're going to do. If only k is odd, you're going to rewrite sine to the k power as sine to the k minus 1 of x times sine of x. Notice I wrote the 1 in there just so we could explicitly think about what's happening with the exponents in that case. For that sine to the k minus 1 x, we're going to use the formula sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x, that's our Pythagorean identity, and we're going to rewrite that in terms of cosine. Then we're going to go ahead and use the u substitution, that u is cosine of x and du is negative sine x dx. If on the other hand only j is odd, then instead of rewriting the sine, we're going to rewrite cosine. Cosine to the j minus 1 of x times cosine of x, and we're going to this time use cosine squared of x equaling 1 minus sine squared x to rewrite the cosine j minus 1 in terms of sine. And then our u substitution will be u equals sine x and du is cosine x d. If both are odd, you can do either one or two. It does not matter. It will work. The only tricky part is if they're both even, we're going to have to use the dreaded double angle formulas in order to put it in terms of an odd number. So you can either use sine squared x equaling 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2x, or the cosine squared x equaling 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2x. Notice that brings a sine squared or a cosine squared into just a cosine. So that brings our exponent down by 1, which will make one of them odd. And then you're just going to go to step 1 or 2. All right, let's do some quick examples. Let's start off with case number one. Let's do cosine to the eighth power of x times sine to the fifth power of x dx. j is 8, k is 5. We find that this is case one because the sine exponent is what's um, odd. So we rewrite sine to the fifth as sine to the fourth times sine. Sine to the fifth is then 1 minus cosine squared squared, because again, if that's sine squared in the parentheses, to get to the fourth power, we're going to square that. And then we multiply it by sine x. So let's go ahead and pop that back into our original equation. Don't forget to properly use um, the method of multiplying a binomial times itself, and don't just try to distribute that too. We'll get this. And then if we use our part C, we use the substitution that u is equal to cosine x and du is equal to negative sine dx. Or, since we only have sine dx, that's negative du. So we plug that in. Then we go ahead and distribute that u to the eighth power. And now we're left with a pretty reasonable integration. When we go ahead and integrate, we have that negative sign out front. Again, that's from the taking the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x, so that's why we have that negative sign there with that du, and we're going to multiply that by 1 ninth u to the ninth, minus 2 11ths u to the 11, plus 1 13th u to the 13th. When we go ahead and distribute that negative sign and go back to our u substitution, that u is equal to cosine x, we get this as a final answer. That's case one, case two would be very similar, case 3 is case 1 or case 2, but let's look at a what seems like a simple question for case number 4, where they're both even. I'm going to pick a pretty straightforward one, just the integral of sine squared x dx. It's very interesting that this seems like a simple problem, but we have not been able to solve this yet, so now we can use what we know about our double angle formulas to help us. So sine squared x is equal to 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2x. Go ahead and plug that in. And now this is actually a straightforward integration because we know how to integrate cosine of 2x. That's equal to 1 half sine of 2x. And we go ahead and this one's pretty straightforward. So if they're both even, in this case cosine to the 0 power, 0 is an even number, 
we're using case number four. And we didn't actually have to go back to case one or case two. You will have situations if there was, this was, for instance, signed to the fourth power, then we would have to do something in terms of case one and case two. Now, notice that in both of these cases, the X's are the same, but that doesn't always have to be the case. I'm taking this right out of the OpenStax book, the volume two for calculus. And this shows you that if we had different coefficients, different numerical coefficients in front of the X in terms of sine and cosine, they don't actually have to be the same. We would be using different substitutions. I'm not going to go through examples of this. I don't have any homework on this, but it would be exactly the same method. And why would we ever do this? Well, if you wanted to get to signal processing, quantum mechanics, or um, Fourier series, you'd have to do things like this. But chances are by the time you get to those classes, you will have totally forgotten how to do this. But just know that just like these other substitutions, we have different substitutions to help us out in this situation.